Did Apple just change all of advertising forever? I'm sure those are the headlines you've been reading. And I'm sure there's a video above me, below me, left or right. iOS 14 and digital advertising as we know it is going to change, but is it the end of the world? In this video, we're gonna talk about what is actually happening, what you can do to make sure that you have a proper game plan in place, and what we're doing as brand owners and operators and advisors to make sure that none of this truly impacts us. Okay, so what is it? What is this iOS 14 update that Apple's gonna push and why are all the social platforms and advertisers and brands freaking out? Simply put, it's gonna impact two different things. The first is the way that data is received from these devices. And second, the way that us advertisers, brands, marketers are reading that information in a timely manner. Now, what can you do about this? That is the thing that I wanna get into. But first, let's talk about why this is coming about. Apple has always been at arm's length of about to sell data, about to be in a position where they need to be in that information game. Because why? It's so lucrative. YouTube, Google, Snapchat, Pinterest, you name it, they're selling the data and that's where a lot of the income is coming from. Apple, not so much. What they're doing is they're selling hard devices, whether it's an iPad, MacBook, or the iPhone, that is the game that they're in. But they can't live without each other because the selling of these devices and the usage of these devices, mainly around the App Store, as well as digital products, hello Shopify, hello uh, WooCommerce, all these areas where they're selling actual pieces and devices and, and accessories left and right, that's dependent on these major advertising platforms. So they still need to play nice. But what does that mean for us? What does that mean for the brand owner, the advertiser, and the marketer? Well, some things are gonna be updated. Let me get into exactly what those things are going to be. And also, make sure you stick around to the end for a little surprise. So how is this going to impact you? Let me just level set early on. I'm not gonna save it for the ending. No matter what niche, no matter what industry, no matter what you're doing, SaaS, digital, physical, local, you will be impacted. It's gonna impact us in two specific areas, the optimization of your ad performance and the measurement of your ad performance. We'll get into specifically what we can do to prevent this or at least have a good game plan before it. But honestly, if you're using an ads manager or a self-serve system, you will be impacted. Let's get into some things you can do to give yourself the best opportunity to be ready for when these changes do happen. Okay, so don't freak out. Right now, we're at part three. We're gonna talk about things that you can do to mitigate and prepare for what's about to happen. Now, this should have already happened. This was the conversation around January. Now we're into February and the update still hasn't totally happened. You might start to see some things losing access. Maybe there's some data that's not populating and that might just be Facebook being Facebook. We're used to that. They're, they're always pushing updates, but I do think there's a little bit of foreshadowing of what's to come. So in this, I want you to really focus on some of the context I'm gonna talk about and two action items that you can do to prevent and be ready for when this does happen for you. So I'm already here at our business manager. We do have a couple of the businesses that we work for, but I'm gonna show you on one of the main brands that we own. As you navigate in, it's probably gonna drop you off into your overall business home. I need you guys to navigate towards those business settings. Clicking down on the left, coming in. And now what we see is on the left side, a little bit of our navigation. So what I want us to do is go towards brand safety, select that domain. And as you can already see, this business has already been verified. Now say we wanted to add a different one. Go ahead and go David Von Sample.com. It would prompt us to use two different locations. Easiest way of doing this is pulling in the MetaTag verification and dropping it into your actual homepage, which Shopify provides this, WooCommerce provides this, any of these platforms do provide this. I'm not positive on ClickFunnels, but ClickFunnels, anybody here that's an expert, go ahead and comment that below and help out the rest of your friends. So after this has been verified, it will look something similar to this. It'll turn green. You might have to wait maybe 24 to 48 hours, depending on how you've done it, if you've done it correctly. But if it turns green, you're good to go. Cool, so as you can see, the assets that are connected, pages, the domain access, and it will show you who can edit this, what can make updates. Anybody can edit and add links. Any page can edit and add links to your domain of their Facebook ads. That way, if you have a partner, maybe an agency or freelancer running it, they're able to make decisions on your behalf so you don't you yourself don't have to go back and forth and do it. Next 
is going to be prioritizing the pixel events. Probably the most crucial and critical one for you to do. You only get eight of these. It's different, it's new, but honestly, eight is not that much of an issue. You don't need more than eight unless you're trying to do some special custom conversions or you're optimizing heavily on value. You should be okay. Let me show you what that looks like. What's up guys? Before we get back to it, if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and smash that like button. And if you have any recommendations on what you want to hear about Facebook ads as you're launching, getting started, let me know in the comments below. Let's get back into it. You're gonna hit the nine circles. We're gonna to navigate toward Events Manager. Now once the Events Manager populates, you should see this new little button populating right here. Traditional view, there it is. Aggregated events measurement. And if we were to hit configure events, it would look something similar to this. So as you can see, David Vaughn, it's already been validated, it's already been verified. If I click in it again, I already have eight of these events already assigned. Now some of you, it won't look like five events. We're optimizing for value, so that does take up extra events. Even if you do custom conversions, it will take up a couple more events. So if I were to edit this, you'll get this nice prompt. Once Apple begins enforcing the app tracking transparency framework or the ATT, that little prompt that probably looks something like this, that's gonna scare everybody into selecting out, that's my assumption, but I actually don't think most people will do it. If Facebook and Instagram can get their own prompt, which they are saying a lot about them doing right before this ATT prompt comes, I think we'll be in a better position because right now this wording is a little bit more harsh than expected. So back in, once Ample begins rolling out this app tracking transparency framework on iOS 14 devices, changing the event configurations will cause any impacted ad sets and ads to be paused for a 72 hour period to allow the changes to take effect. What this means is as soon as this does roll out and you wanna go change the prioritization or add new events to optimize for, you're gonna to have to wait 72 hours before things come into play, which in our recommendation, if you're gonna change it after the fact, just turn the ads off until everything gets updated. Go ahead and hit edit. Something to highlight. Since we are optimizing for value, and I'll highlight over this, it's a little bit of the optimization game. If you believe optimizing for value in some of your campaigns is the most valuable way of going through it, right now in our experience, it's very hit or miss. It's something that I believe that you should test, but I wouldn't if you aren't running massive volume, what I mean quarter of a million, half a million dollars a month, something for you to realize you don't necessarily need to be optimizing for value. Now, if you have a custom conversion, if you're running any leads, SaaS, maybe pay-per-click, pay-per-call, this might be important because there might be a step two or step three that you really do need to optimize against. But for a traditional e-commerce play, this should be more than enough. As you can see, we prioritize view content as the lowest priority, added cart, then to initiate checkout, and then finally purchase. I am going back and forth between adding an ad payment info just to get another data point, but yet, I'm not fully convinced that I wanna make that decision just yet. But if you have, I would love to hear if you did in the comments below. So as you can see, we have purchase, initiate checkout, add a cart, and view content, the events that matter the most. This is the order we want, and this is the order I recommend. And if you did need to change it or make any sort of updates, and I needed to lower this down, it would allow me to do so. But right now, since I'm using all eight out of eight, everything is already grayed out. Ultimately, these two specific changes of verifying your domain and prioritizing your pixel events are gonna give us the best opportunity to be prepared when this stuff does drop. And honestly, like I said before, it's in February, 2021 right now, and we still don't know when this is gonna come out. They said it was gonna happen back in January. And honestly, will it ever happen? I don't know, but everybody's still freaking out about it. Let me tell you exactly what I and my team are doing to prepare so that when this does happen, if this does happen, we're ready and we're gonna be the first ones out the gate. All right. So what are we doing to make sure that we're prepared, we're ready, and we're not freaking out? Well, that's exactly what we're doing. We're not freaking out. This hasn't happened yet, and there's a lot of chatter, especially across a lot of my friends and, and those who are in the industry. Nothing firm has happened. So we're definitely not buying software tools that are gonna give us server-to-server -server communication. That's one thing we're not. Now we're taking business calls, and we're taking calls with the Hyros, the GetLavars, the Wicker Reports, we're looking at these data tools that are give us a nice bigger picture of attribution, but we're not freaking out. Educating ourselves. What I recommend for you, which is probably why you're watching this video. Second, we're doubling down on understanding what creative is going to work. It's crazy that we're in 2021 and we're having to discuss the importance of understanding and analyzing specific elements of creative that drive revenue consistently. 
It really is a puzzle. It really is a mathematical equation with a nice creative element towards it. So what I do recommend is understanding and breaking down the type of content that we're running towards. Now, this means the type of content shot, the duration of the content shot, the models or people used in the shot, the structure of the ad itself, the duration, the placement of the ad. What we like to call is our content bricks, breaking down, analyzing, and fully understanding where conversion's happening. At four to five seconds of this one specific creative, we're starting to see that the click-throughs are increasing. Because the click-throughs are increasing, revenue is being driven more likely from this type of ad versus this ad over here. That's the type of conversation that you, your team, and other marketers should be having because at the end of the day, it's all creative, baby. And it's an iterative process. It's not seeking for perfection because you and I both know, if you're watching this video, you care enough to continue to find solutions. Personally, ads die out. Ad fatigue is real. But a concept is forever, especially if you can keep reiterating upon it. So what I like to say is hire a designer. Get to know their style. If not, use a service that are able to give you more iterations, more variables consistently, as constant as you can get it into your system. And lastly, map towards an MER, marketing efficiency ratio. That simply put, dollars spent to dollars returned. Previously, we're able to make decisions on an ad account and we're able to map exactly to the revenue driven within Shopify or whatever your cart is going to be. You have to take a little bit more of a zoomed out approach. So many of us are running through the trees and not taking a look at that forest. That forest is profitability. What is your net profitability on a one day, three day, seven day, and that monthly basis? That's our guiding true north. A lot of us are sitting in these ad accounts and going day over day, optimizing and being really frustrated because guess what? That one change or impact that you did within the ad account is not necessarily gonna feel the impact or you're not gonna see in your pocketbook for a couple more days. That's what optimization is, especially as we spent the millions and millions of dollars that we are spending. You have to give yourself kind of like a fine wine, room for it to breathe. Launch your test, understand your decision-making metrics, making good decisions, that MGD, and begin to optimize. If you want to learn a little bit more about how we're doing all this stuff, go ahead and click the description below because I guarantee you, you'll learn one or two things. If not, come back and leave me a comment. I'd love to do some more education for you. Let's take a breath together. You're going to be okay. The digital advertising world has existed for a long time and it's gonna to continue to exist. So for you right now, go ahead and put those domains verified. Prioritize your pixel events and get to learning your creative. Those are the three areas that I think will give you the best opportunity to weather anything that's coming down the line. Hey, and guess what? If you need some support, if you need someone to listen to you, if you need a shoulder to cry on, I'm in the comments below. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed that video and learned heaps from it. And if you did, I'd love to invite you right now to see my free training with Founder. I'll be teaching you how to get started with Facebook ads. I'll be revealing everything I've learned from spending $100 million on platform. And all you have to do is click the link in the description and I'll see you inside. Hey guys, hope you're loving our videos and that you're getting heaps of value from them. If you are, make sure to hit the like button and make sure to subscribe to join the Founder Fam. If you did enjoy this video and want to continue to master your skills, make sure you click here to access your free training now, where we'll go into way more depth with this founder.